Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're in the kitchen this time and we're going to be showing you guys how we roast our crickets. So, let's get into it. Okay, so the first things first is if you buy live crickets, make sure you freeze them. So, I'll show you guys what these look like now. So, these guys have already been frozen, and if you go back and watch one of our previous videos on the channel, it was called Harvesting Crickets, and we just run through the process of what we actually do when we freeze our crickets. It's very, very simple. All we do is we leave them in the freezer for 12 hours, but if you don't want to leave them in there for 12 hours, you can leave them in there for three. Three will be long enough for them to actually be frozen and for them to be euthanized but we recommend leaving them in for 12 just because then you get rid of a little bit of bacteria as well. So these guys are frozen crickets, ready to start roasting. Okay, so from here we're going to show you guys the two most basic ways to actually roast crickets and that's going to be pan frying them and also in an oven. Um, the reason why I picked those two is because they're probably the most likely to be found in most households around the world and in Australia. So, just those two options today, I know there is things like air frying and dehydrating um, and they're different methods, but or maybe I'll do that in another video, but just for today, we're going to do pan frying and in the oven. So, here we go. The first thing we actually have to do is rinse them, clean them off. So, let's get to it. Okay, so first process is we need to rinse off our crickets. So, you can either use a sieve like this or a colander. Um, me personally, I like to use a colander because they just have a little bit bigger holes in them and a few more legs and wings just get passed through. So, just got a few crickets here and all we have to do is give them a quick rinse. Now that they're all rinsed off, and the reason why I rinse them off is because sometimes there is just a little bit of frass or bacteria, the legs, the antlers, all those like little nitty gritty things. Um, I just like to get rid of them before I actually start processing them any further. And the reason why I do that is just because I don't like it. Now some people will eat frozen crickets or just chuck them straight in the pan. Um, but me personally, I just like to rinse them off a little bit. So yeah. Now, the next thing that we have to do, and this is optional, so you don't have to do this when you're roasting the crickets, is boil them. And the reason why some people boil them is they either use the water to make a broth or they're making some sort of pasta. It's just like a kind of an extra product that people will use and also kills all the bacteria. But the thing is, if you are using them for pan frying the crickets or if you're gonna chuck them in the oven to roast them, all the bacteria is gonna be killed either way, so it doesn't matter. So you don't have to boil them, but I'm gonna show you guys the boiling process right now. All right, first thing to do is to get some water. The next thing to do is to bring water to the boiling temperature. Alright, now that the water has come to boil, next thing we need to do is to add our crickets. to just give this a quick little stir and then I'll set a time for five minutes. At about the halfway point I do like to just give them a quick check and a quick little stir to see how it's going. 
making sure that nothing sticks to the side. And see in another two and a half minutes. After the boiling's done, all you have to do is put them back into a colander and strain them. The next thing is to set your oven to 100 degrees Celsius and put it on the fan bake. While the oven is preheating, make sure you get your tray out, put some baking paper on it, and then you can place your crickets that you want to roast on the tray. Once your oven is ready, you can then place the crickets inside. and you have to leave these guys in there for two hours. You're probably thinking that two hours is a long time and if you want to shorten that time, all you have to do is turn the temperature up on the actual oven itself, but it may actually affect the taste because you can get a bit of a burnt taste into your crickets. So this is just the most easiest, tastiest way that I've found to roast my crickets. So yeah, that's how we roast our crickets in the oven. So in two hours time, we'll see you again. So after two hours is done, this is what the crickets will look like. Here are the crickets after two hours of roasting. And you can see that all the moisture is completely gone from them. They're also super light now. And this is the stage where you can start blending them up into a powder, or you can add them into your cooking. Okay, so now that the oven roasted crickets are done, we're gonna show you guys how we do it with a pan now. You've boiled or washed off your crickets, you then want to set the stove top to medium heat. Add in your crickets. I also like to add a little bit of olive oil as well. That way they just get nice and crispy. Every minute or so, you just wanna quickly move the crickets around and stop it from burning on the bottom of the pan. And if you wanted to add any garlic or any spices, now would be the time. See that extra flavor, but today we're just gonna be roasting crickets up. Just plain, no flavoring. This whole process should take around 20 to 30 minutes, but depending on how or if you boiled your crickets, and then also how much oil you put on them, will determine how long you need to cook your crickets for but an overarching rule is to make sure that they're light and crispy. So once the crickets are all nice and crispy, they should come out looking something like this. So here, you can see the difference between the two, these are the pan fried crickets. They're a little bit darker because we cooked them in some oil. And then the oven roasted crickets. You can see they're light brown. And they're the difference between the two. That's everything for roasting your crickets at home. Now this whole video, like I said before, it is a bit more of a process starting from a live cricket or a frozen cricket. So if you are interested, you can just buy roasted crickets or a powdered form of crickets. And the reason why you probably do that is just to save the time. And then you can just add them straight into your smoothies or into your baking or pastries or whatever you're planning on making. 
But if you do choose to do the pan fried crickets at home with a little bit of oil, I would recommend you put them in some curries or some stir fries. They just taste a little bit better. Um, whereas the roasted ones, you can get away with a lot more things. You can, you can still add these guys into your stir fries and into your uh, curries, but then you can also turn them into a powder form and add them into your smoothies. Or if you're making chocolate chip co cookies, you can also add them into that. So I would recommend just having the roasted, if you do have an oven that is, roasting your crickets like that because they're just a lot more diverse, you can do a lot more with them. So, and lastly, I am actually putting together a little bit of a cookbook. So if you do have any cool ways you cook your crickets or any cool recipes that taste amazing with crickets, they don't have much of a taste as such, so you do need to add some different flavours and some spices to make them taste pretty good. But with that being said, they are unbelievably good for you. Like most people know, they're anywhere between 60 and 80% protein, depending on how well you cook them. So yeah, they're just awesome for you and they're awesome for the planet. And yeah, so um, thank you guys once again for supporting the channel. And we'll see you in the next video where hopefully we'll be making some recipes with the crickets. So have a great day. Bye.